Coming up on iPads in the Classroom, we're going to talk about blogging. Hi, my name is Guy Trainin, and this is iPads in the Classroom from Tech Edge, and today we're going to talk about blogging with Ashley. I'm Ashley Roki, and I'm a pre-service elementary school teacher. And so today we're going to talk about blogging. These are some apps we've talked about before, but I think it's worth going back to them because blogging is one of those practices that is really going to add to any writing curriculum. So let's start with KidBlog. Okay, so the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to create a class. I'm going to go to create a class. Mm -hmm. I'm going to choose a display name and a password and an email, class name, iPads, iPads, okay, <laughs> and already registered. Okay, so <laughs> we saw how you uh, create a class, it allows you to go in, let's go in into your account and see what you have. Okay. So I just click on that, and when I click on username, you can see that all the other students' names come up. Okay, so once you enter everybody's names once, they're all in there. Yes, you enter their name and you assign them a password. I used a four-digit simple, and I wrote those out on cards for them. Um, so I'm going to go to mine. And so now that you've logged in, what do we see? Um, the control panel basically. Mm -hmm. New posts, previous posts, so there's actually only one post on here and it was the students were publishing friendly letters mm -hmm. and I wanted them to get experience publishing in a different way versus writing all the time with pen and paper. So you can see um, this is where I, this was my original post mm -hmm. and then you can see the comments. So, so it's students responded to their post yep. with their own comments. And this is one of the advantages of blogging is that it's actually published and then students can respond to that and they can select which one and how much of a response they have. Yes. Okay. And can we look at some student uh, examples? Do you have some uh, student writing here? There's some student writing. Mm -hmm. So students so talk us through the process that you went through with the students. Okay, with the students, I had it pulled up on the Apple TV in the classroom, and I um, actually was able to create a jump code mm -hmm. because it was going to be too complicated for them to type in a long web address. Um, so that was nice. Um, so they were able to put that in, and it took them right to the site, and they just had to select their name, mm -hmm. put in their password that they were given the slips of paper for, and they got on, and they were able to see my post mm -hmm. and I read through it with them and then I um, directed them through how they were going to respond to the post to the post mm -hmm. and um, they just typed up their responses it was really simple and I was amazed with how it went actually so a few things that I think are important to mention about kids blog one is that this is not a platform that's specific to the iPad so if you have computers Chromebooks anything that you have in the classroom will work. You can work it even with phones, although again, phones with limited screen sizes are sometimes problematic just to, to find a, a, enough place to type and follow your thoughts and all of that. I, iPads, I think, with the screen size are much better, but you can do it on almost any device. And Kids Blog, uh, the second advantage is that it's limited to the people that are registered to that website. So if you're worried about how students are going to uh, expose their information to the world. Kids Blog has allowed you a safe place where only people that you have approved can have information and can connect with the kids. So they are connecting with each other, connecting with other classes if you approve it, but they can't really just anyone else in the world uh, sneak in and try to get information or start a conversation or any of the things we worry about. Now, I personally think that it is an opportunity to talk to kids about digital citizenship and what's good and what's, uh, what other things you should be careful of. But if you want to start with a safe environment where 
kids are open to create, open to share without worrying and without parents worrying, Kids Blog is a great place for that. Um, yeah. Oh, I was just going to add that if you were to do a post and mm -hmm. you wanted students to post back on it and you didn't want any other students to see their post, there is an option to so they can just see their own. So, so they, you make it completely private. Right. Other students wouldn't be able to see other students' posts. And what I love about this interface for the teacher is that this is a really easy, easy interface to go through, select, look at responses, select posts and all of that. You can very quickly get a good sense of what students are doing. And the other great thing is you don't have paper to collect, you don't have paper to grade. It's all right there, always available to you. The second app, and this is my favorite uh, blogging app, is Blogger. Um, this is a Blogger and I have a, a Blogger website. And what you can see on the left are the blog posts I've had in the last uh, few weeks. And if I click on any one of them, it shows you exactly what it'll look like. Uh, you can view the blog itself. This is how it will look like online on my blog. And you can see that there are multiple. So there's a way to quickly access the, the blog. And on top of that, you have a few features here that I love. The first one is, of course, to start a new blog. So if you click right there, you just put a title to the post. And this is my title right now. You write, you can add pictures, you can add locations. Uh, so I can take a picture right now. Uh, here's a picture of Dan and our camera. Let's see if it'll be right. Use photo. So here's our picture and then I can add text. I can say where we are at. I can select location. We are in the University of Nebraska Lincoln and I can select something from my photo stream. So I'll select another picture here. So you can see that you can add a lot to, uh, to this very, very easily. You write your text and again, blogging is supposed to be less formal. A great way to share thoughts, to quickly jot a few notes down, which is how I use it. And then you have two options. You can save it uh, and then it's saved but not published or you can immediately publish. So if you want to still think about it, you want to edit it, you want to uh, make sure somebody else takes a look at it or just let it have some time to think, is this what I really want to say? You can do that, but you don't uh, have to and then I'll just discard it. The other thing you can do is you can uh, use Google Plus. If you have a Google Plus account, uh, you can use Google Plus to immediately push that new blog post that you made to people that are connected to you. So if it's a classroom, for example, you can push it to parents and to other teachers in the school, maybe a classroom, another classroom you're connected with. So these are great ways to connect. The other way to use blogs that we're seeing more and more uh, teachers do, and that is to use the blogs to reflect on your own teaching, to think about how you're integrating new technologies into your classroom or how you're using new instructional approaches. And this is a way to just do online thinking, but also to get feedback from others. So this is Blogger and it's another great tool to do some blogging. So today on iPads in the Classroom, we met Ashley and we got to talk about some blogging and we'll see you next time on iPads in the Classroom.